Okay, so here we go. This is going to be chapter four, next step. This is advanced coding, pathology, and lab. Um, this particular chapter um, just gets you, I think, a little bit more familiar with the laboratory side. There's a whole lot of lab codes um, to look up. It gives you a little bit of information here regarding a super bill, pink sheet. I think they're called several different things. We call them super bills. Um, that you, you generally, I think all of us are familiar with this. We get this from our docs. Um, usually from our docs, it'll have different diagnoses and maybe E&M and all of that. This happens to be a lab super bill. So it's a little different. But um, this chapter will kind of get you looking up each of these codes. So uh, a little monotonous, I, I agree with that, um, but it has some great exercises in your panels. Remember we talked about, let me get my path and lab up here. In basic coding, we talked about um, these beginning codes being panels and how according to the guidelines, you can't in order to claim this code, all of these components have to be present. Uh, if all of these components are present, then you have to use the panel code. If anything's missing, then you have to code them individually. And I think uh, this does a really good job of kind of walking through that, getting you familiar with um, the different parts of these panels uh, and getting familiar with how to use those codes. So I think that's a, that's a very good uh, exercise. Um, your, your case 2A and 2B is good about these therapeutic drugs and it's going to help you be able to uh, put together that digoxin or that lab may be testing for a patient that or helping to control a patient that has congestive heart failure or atrial fib, flutter, tachycardia, those kinds of things. Lithium, could be helping to control in its therapeutic range, someone with bipolar, cluster headaches, that kind of thing. I do think um, this part kind of helps, or these exercises very much help uh, link some of that in our minds. Um, and then same thing here with the drug monitoring. These are specific drugs that they're trying to find the quality of, okay? Uh, I think they're good. Um, these, uh, this wordy stuff will kind of help get used to some of the different tests you may see done in a uh, doctor's office, depending. Um, remember we went through uh, the difference in chemistry opposed to microbiology, opposed to immunology, those different codes. So this would be a test of those chemistries. And uh, your chemistry kind of talks about that here. These are um, the different components that could be floating around in your blood, iron in your blood, um, uh, what your blood gas is, your bilirubin, bun, which is um, to test your kidneys, HDL, this is your happy cholesterol, LDL, which is your sad cholesterol or your bad cholesterol. So that's what this is. And again, it, it is a lot of looking up, but in the end, it gets you a lot more familiar with that particular area. A second area that we had talked about, so uh, a little bit of wordy stuff. Again, this is your lab requ uh, requisition or super bill. Then, so we had the chemistry section of um, lab, and then we have the hematology. So this is different uh, properties of the blood. It isn't chemicals floating around in it, it's actual properties of the blood, whether it be red blood cells, white blood cells, coagulation factors, that kind of stuff. So that's what's gonna be in your hematology. And you will have hematology to where you have to go and find um, your hemograms, uh, platelet counts, Coombs test, you know, leukocytes, the different ones, um, platelets again, that kind of thing. Okay, so this was plate, platelet count auto. This is platelets automated. Probably the same. Probably the same code, 
just worded different. So that's good to know too. Coagulation, this is um, how what your bleeding times are. Um, very good um, exercise. Remember all of these, or most of these, at least for the odds, are in your uh, the back of your book. So you should be able to, to check yourself well. If you get something wrong, compare what you, the description of the code you picked, compared to the description of the correct code. And... Um, Try to try to analyze it and see where you went wrong. That task, it's easy to ask me the right answer. What really helps you become a better coder is comparing both of your own wrong an comparing your wrong answer to the right answer and you trying to analyze where you went wrong. That will very much help um, change coding behavior, which means you would be more accurate than not. Um, you've got the immunology section. Of your ICM of the path and lab. This is different um, immunology, ANA factors, ASO screens, hepatitis B surface antigens, HIV testing, mono testing, rubella antibodies, that kind of stuff. Then you have your body fluids. So these are more um, uh, samples that they may be testing. Then you have just a section for office testing. This is kind of good to know because they do do dipsticks and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, so that kind of helps you get familiar with what you may see in the office. Then you do have two, two exercises here on that uh, drug class, screening and testing. And remember, you have the one section that tests for just the quality if it's there. And then you have another section that tests for that quantity of it. Okay, so this is kind of good summing up um, uh, information, wordy stuff. It also helps with some of these Z codes, how you would use the Z codes. Remember, those are kind of weird. They're tough sometimes. Um, here's your evocative and suppression testing. Transfusion, microbiology, this is when they're growing stuff out, microorganisms. Your anatomy, uh, anatomic pathology, this is your autopsy. You, I kind of doubt that you would have this on your board. I don't know, you might. It seems like it would be a waste to me if I were writing the board to have this on there because there just aren't that many possibilities of it. Now, I do want to... Um, talk a little bit about the pathology here because that has several components to it. So we remember in our path and lab, we have, let me get over to the lab or the pathology part of that. Let's be back here. We get through all of these. Oh, that's what I told you. We're still not there. Oops, still not there. We have the first section is going to be, okay, so there's our cells. Uh, here's our surgical pathology. So this first section, we should already have all of this labeled. This first section is just your different levels. So you just kind of plug in. We've already talked about how to use um, this section. But in this, you have to remember that you have your pathology consultations during surgery. So I want to look at some of these scenarios to make sure that we're picking up uh, the intra-op type of um, wording. So uh, Dr. Green's patient likes, so this is 415, and I know you have the answers. I still want to walk through it. Um, patient was currently in hospital with Dr. Green and asked Dr. Lone Wolf to consult with him on Lonnie's therapeutic drug levels. Um, so this is a, this is, touch different, Dr. Lone provided a limited consultation. So this is actually under the clinical pathology. We're not quite into um, the, the levels yet, but I want you to kind of know the difference. So this clinical pathology is going to be when potentially a pharmacist or a, or a, I didn't mean pharmacist, a pathologist may be looking at the chart. They may not ever see the patient or they could, um, depends. Um, and they're going to render an opinion. So that's so a pathologist would give their opinion based on uh, reading the chart. And that's what this is. And then, so uh, three slides were then sent to Dr. Lone Wolf. So he's not only going to provide 
the clinical looking at the chart, he's actually going to provide some consultation too. I mean, some actual looking at slides. So slides were reviewed and prepared, prepared and sent to him. Uh, and then Dr. Lodenwolf prepares a written report. Um, and it was malignant prostate cancer. So 88321 is the code for that consultation. And then your C61 is um, the diagnosis code. And then um, again, here, Dr. Green is asking Dr. Lone Wolf to provide a surgical pathology during a surgical procedure. That's the key word to get you to that intraoperative consult. So um, you would, if, if I were, this scenario just has the during the intraop. Chances are what you would be coding would have mention of the intra-op or during the surgical procedure, but it would also have the path report from that, the, from that sample. So you would also code one of the levels. So not only would you code that intra-op consultation, and you always have to have um, documentation that this pathology consultation was during the surgery, intraoperatively, during surgery, we halted um, uh, the procedure to get Dr. Lone Wolf's opinion. So that's indicating that the patient's still laying there open and we're waiting on an opinion. So if that intraoperative consultation um, was also associated with the pathology report, you would also find a level. Plug the, uh, and I think this one ended up being, wasn't it uh, malignant? primary breast cancer. So we really do not have, so to determine your levels, you have to plug in what it was before the surgery, going into surgery. So we do not have enough information here um, to determine if it was a lump that went into surgery, if they'd already done a biopsy and they knew that it was breast cancer going into surgery, that would change your pathology level. So we really don't have the information in order to do a level at this point, but just giving you a real world scenario of how you may, how you might use this. Here's your cyto uh, pathology stuff, uh, or there's just two codes. Probably you're not gonna have too awful much um, on the uh, board with that either. It's, it's an extremely specialized section. Um, this next wordy part breaks down those levels in pathology that I was talking about. Maybe different wording to help you understand better. Maybe I didn't um, explain things well or in an angle that was easy for you to understand. The different specimens that you would see and then you'll have a few of these um, reports. So um, let's look at the surgery pathology report. I know you have the answers, but I still want to break it down with what you're reading. So the tissue received by the pathologist was five separate colon polyps and five separate cassettes. That means we have five tissue samples, so you're gonna have to represent that in your codes. So uh, they usually do label them as A, B, C, D. So here you'll see A, B, C, D, E. So that would be all five. Uh, it says each were labeled um, A through E. Label A was from the rectum and it describes it. Then it should go to B was from the sigmoid. C was from the ascending. D was from the colon and E was at the splenic flexure. So it's very clear we have five separate um, biopsies or five separate um, samples from different places within the colon. So then here they come back with none of them were malignant, they were all the hyperplastic polyp. So you would find hyperplastic polyp in your um, levels so how I do levels, especially just starting out, your level two, this is no disease process. These, these are foreskin of a newborn. 
um, incidental uh, appendix, fallopian tubes that were cut for sterilization, that kind of stuff. There was no expectation it was disease. There was another reason that you were um, uh, having those removed. Um, so your level three, these are low risk. So I would look here to see if there's a colon polyp in here. The only colon there is, is a colostomy stoma. So that's not what we have. So I'd go to the next, colon biopsy. Mm, that doesn't exactly fit. It may be it, but let's keep going. Uh, let's look here. Colon segmental resection other than for tumor. Mm, not sure that that's what we have either. And then here is a colon total resection. So total resection, we, we didn't know that it was cancer going in, so it can't be that one. This colon segmental resection means there was actually a segment of the colon removed, which there wasn't. So we're going to have to go with this colon biopsy. So those polyps were the biopsy. So it would be 88305. That's just kind of how I work through those levels. Um, sometimes I go too far and then have to come back. Um, path and lab um, for uh, the review, uh, this would be like for H. pylori, um, viral cultures, this is very specific. Western blots are in here. So again, this is just an exercise finding those codes um, and plugging them in. Ultimately, just getting more familiar with with the laboratory section. Here's some super bills, several pages of super bills. Gets you fairly um, familiar with what's on here. And then you just plug in what's been marked. You would plug in those codes. Okay, several of them to get you used to looking at the super bills. And then you're in auditing. So this chapter is not too, um, it's labor intensive because of all the codes, but it's not, it's a lot of um, going over stuff and um, kind of review and just getting used to, okay? And so our next chapter will be the integumentary chapter five. See you in the next video.